Hello and thank you for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed the broadcast so far. And today's session is all about discovering your life-changing career with Cancer Research UK. I'm Crystal. And I'm Ben. And today we're at Cancer Research UK's offices in London, which is a very inspiring place to be. Cancer Research UK is a prominent cancer and awareness charity whose very end goal is to beat cancer. And they strongly believe that every single role here helps them reach their final goal. And we are SpringPod, a place where young people can discover their future careers. This National Careers Week, we've joined hands with leading employers in science, technology and engineering. And together we'll show you how you can make a difference to the world and the lives around you by taking up a career in STEM. Joining us on our panel today are Kristen, Anthony, Maisha and Adam. Between them, they'll help us understand a little bit more about cancer research, the sort of roles they have on offer and of course what it's like to work here. But before that, let's get to know them a little bit better. Hi, I'm Maisha. I'm a business operation administrator apprentice. Uh, hi, I'm Adam, and I'm a technology graduate. Hi, I'm Kristen, and I'm a technology project support intern. Hello, I'm Anthony, and I'm a lead product manager. Lovely, thank you guys. And just for like um, the viewers at home, could you probably just take us through who Cancer Research are and what you stand for? Yeah, well, so as you said, we are um, a charity that funds cancer research. We're actually the second biggest funder of um, cancer research in the world. Okay, lovely. And cancer research wants to make a real difference to the community. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your mission, please, Kristen? Uh, yeah, so at the moment, our overarching mission is to have three in four people surviving cancer by 2034. Um, and we're doing that by funding research, sort of health campaigns and um, various things like that. Oh, that's nice. And um, obviously, Cancer Research is a charitable organisation, so how do you stay innovative when it comes to you know, the science, research and technology part? Anthony? So we fund um, scientists and researchers across the country. Um, it's hundreds of millions of pounds in grants every year, and they're the people who are doing the real innovation. You can see the test tubes and things behind us on the wall, the pictures there. That's kind of a representation of... Uh, what the science that they do and what we do here in Cancer Research UK's technology arm here in London is to try and keep at the forefront of business innovation to help them achieve that. So we try and make our processes better, we try and make more of the, the money that our supporters kindly give us in order that we can give more money to those um, researchers in their grants. Okay, fascinating. And Anthony, can you tell us a little bit more about your role here at Cancer Research UK? Uh, I'm a lead product manager. We've got um, about 12 people in uh, what we call the product team. So um, by, by a product, what we mean is a piece of software, like um, for instance, a word processor is a product. Obviously, we don't make word processors. The bit that I look after, the product that I look after, is the email system. So you might not think that's that complicated, but actually we're emailing up to, sometimes up to a million people at a time. So the email system really has to be on top of everything to know what it's doing. It's a lot of people. There's a lot of legal issues around. Um, you might have heard of GDPR, which came into effect last yeah. year. That puts in very stringent fines for companies that, um, contact people without permission so we have to make sure that we have a permission for every person on that list um, and I'm one of the people who looks after that product and we have many products that we look after. Oh, wow. wow and I see previously that you used to have a completely different career path that was in journalism so how was that you know the process of making that change from like that to a STEM? Yeah I've, I've taken a bit of a roundabout route to get here um, so I went to university, I studied, um, I actually studied computer science um, 
and then went and did something completely different. I went and became a journalist. So I wrote about music for a while. I interviewed a lot of bands and things like that. That was very fun. Um, but there aren't very many jobs in music journalism, so I ended up writing about technology for a while. Um, and then got more and more involved in um, running the website that I was writing for. So kind of getting more involved in the technical aspects of the site itself. And then from there I went to the BBC to do a similar thing. And then um, from the BBC came here. So yeah, roundabout way of, way of doing things. <laughs> Quite an interesting journey there. Um, what's the best thing about working in this field of science and technology for you? Um, it's, it's very rewarding to be able to go home at the end of the day and feel like what you've done is making a difference. So we're not working for a bank, we're not working for um, you know, an, an oil and gas firm or something. We're, we're not just making money for people. We are helping those researchers to really make a difference to people's lives. Cause, yeah, because cancer does affect like a lot of people, so it's yes. nice to see that you guys are helping. And Aisha, I see that you are one of like the first apprentices. So how has that, you know, impacted on you? And what is your job role here? Um, so I only started a month ago, so my role is pretty new. Um, I have an admin role for business operations, so I support all the teams in tech with like small discrete tasks, and I do a lot of like meetings. Um, booking rooms, travel, and supporting those teams. Mm -hmm. And um, with all your experiences that you have had so far, are you happy with the choice that you made to come into the apprenticeship? Definitely, because my chosen route was actually to go to university and study um, international politics. Oh. But I deferred um, my application and decided I wanted to do an apprentice because I wasn't sure about university and mm. I really enjoyed being here, so I think I made a good choice. Okay, lovely. And uh, Kristen, before uh, we get onto your rather interesting career <laughs> journey, um, can you tell us a little bit more about your internship role, please? Yeah, so as I said, my title is Technology Project Support in Intern. Um, <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit of a mouthful, but it kind of explains itself. So I get to support or help out on lots of different projects across the technology portfolio or directorate. Mm -hmm. um, they're all, all the ones that I work on at the moment are to do with the future of technology at CIUK. Um, so that includes potential internal systems that we might have or maybe potential um, future customer facing or supporter facing systems. Um, so that's quite interesting to get to help out on all of those. And I see that you have a PhD in mathematics, yes. which is like, wow. <laughs> so how did you end up here with like such a big, high qualification? Well, it might not sound like it, but for me, a PhD was actually the path of least resistance. So I studied mathematics as an undergraduate degree because it was what I liked most at school and because I was really good at it. And so I just kind of went into it without thinking too much about what happened in the future. And then similarly, at the end, I could either apply for jobs or keep doing what I was doing, which I did, and I got a PhD. But uh, I realized that, and to sort of reiterate a bit of what Anthony said, going through the only thing that people were going to from a PhD in maths was either academia and continuing maths research or banks and oil <laughs> companies and insurance companies and actuaries and I knew I didn't want to do that so I then took up a position pretty much any position I could find that would accept a maths PhD as something potentially useful to them not completely redundant so I worked as a sub-editor on the science journal Nature for about three years but after the initial kind of excitement wore off, I realized that I wanted to do something that had more meaning and so that at the end of the day, I could think, you know, I might not be on the streets collecting money or I might not be doing the research, but the work that I'm doing is actually going to something important. And that's how I kind of, yeah, about face, completely upended what I was doing and ended up as an intern here at Cancer Research UK. Yeah, that's wow. quite a change, I must yeah. say. Yeah, like, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. What is, what's been your highlight so far in your time at CR UK? Definitely the variety, um, getting to be on so many different projects and that's um, the internship program here is very well structured um, and they sort of it's really supportive and they give you a lot of opportunities. So I've on a lot of projects, um, I actually get to do work on them, not just sort of watch them. And then also 
all of the interns, not just in the technology directorate, uh, get to do a lot of fundraising as part of your internship, so you experience that part. So I'm um, organizing a pub quiz, which I'm really excited about. Oh, that's fun. Lovely. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, and Adam, um, you're on the graduate scheme pr um, program, so what's kind of that like and what's your role here? So yeah, uh, basically what that is, is uh, over a two year period, I'm gonna do four different roles within the technology department. So I'm currently coming up to the end of my first role, um, which was uh, in digital production, which is sort of the uh, supporter facing side of technology. Um, and then in a couple of weeks, I'll be moving to a role in business intelligence, which is completely different. Okay, and cool. you studied physics at uni. Um, now you're in technology. Can you explain kind of about that change there and, and how that's been for you? Yeah, so I mean, I thought I sort of saw it as a as a logical step from from like physics academia into technology, um, particularly in some uh, certain sides of it. Um, that there's quite a big link between the two. Right. I think the bigger change has been moving from studying to to into a professional role. Okay, lovely. So what kind of was it that made you think, like, I want a career in the STEM? Were you interested in science and technology at school, or was it something yeah, different? completely. I mean, it's something I've always been interested in from school, and then I went on to, to study physics, which is a STEM subject at university. Mm. And then from there, it, yeah, it was always the logical decision. I've always been interested in technology, and, and that, that's how I made that move. Oh, that's quite perfect for you then because some people kind of you know force themselves to learn all the science and technology just for the stem but if you like it already it's just a Completely you know yeah. wham bam thank you mum kind of situation it's like <laughs> just going for it <laughs> um so thank you for sharing all your interesting stories with us we're about to get onto our q a section yeah a big thank you to everyone who submitted questions we've picked some for our guests to answer so let's start with this one. Uh, Cancer Research UK is both a charity and an employer in the field of STEM. What's it like working in such a unique environment? Um, well, I think we've sort of talked about it already, but I think um, if you have an interest in STEM and you want to do maths or technology or coding or something like that, there is this kind of feeling that maybe all you can do is work for a bank. Um, but I think the Cancer Research UK and you know the charity environment gives you that opportunity to apply skills that aren't necessarily thought of as being applicable to a charity in a really rewarding environment. That's what I would say. Is anyone else going to add on to that? Um, I've, I think it's it's a great place to work in in STEM terms because although we don't um, we're not at the STEM coalface if you like we're not um, you know we're not doing the research we're not putting um we're not working with test tubes and flasks and things but it's the the research nature of the organization really informs everything we do so you'll talk to people who are doing that research who are immersed in um thinking about that stuff and it means that a lot of things are evidence-based in a way that they're not at some other employers there's a real emphasis on thinking about things and getting to the real reason of why why something happens, why we're doing something, which for, to me seems heavily influenced by the fact that we exist to do research, to fund research. Okay. And we kind of touched on this earlier about how, you know, every role here at Cancer Research UK helps you with that mission about beating cancer. So for us, for a school leaver, what kind of role should they be looking for to help you with that mission? <laughs> um, there's, well, there are a lot of roles here, and as I think we've demonstrated from fairly varied um, selection of people, there's, it, it takes all, we take all backgrounds and all um, paths to get here. Um, there are roles in, in administration, in, in kind of doing technology, if you like. Um, there are all sorts of roles um, in fundraising. It's, it's a, there's a huge range of things that we do as an organisation. So it's not just kind of like a set path. You can go get in through many different routes, basically. Yeah, and, I, and I'd add to that that other than the graduate scheme, we don't require any specific higher education requirements in, okay. in any of technology. Um, so, so kind of anything is available for people who are interested. Okay. And Anthony, you've been to university and also worked across different industries. 
Uh, what's the best advice that you could give to a student who wants to work in the field of science but isn't keen on going to uni? Well, as Adam said, yeah, we don't have a, um, a university requirement for anything apart from the graduate scheme, which obviously you have to be a graduate for. Yeah. For anything else, um, there is no requirement in that sense. Um, and working with the people that I work with, so in my team, we've got software developers, software engineers, we've got user experience people who kind of their job is to understand the users of our services, what they want and how we can serve that. We have um, a delivery manager and her job is to make sure that the team is flowing smoothly. There's a bunch of other people. None of those people have to have been to university. Um, what, what we're looking for is people who have a, an inquiring mind, who want to solve problems, who want to understand what makes people tick in some ways. Um, that's, that's what we do, and you don't need to have been to university to do any of those things. Okay, lovely, thank you for that. And Misha, how do you kind of work to, um, with your role working towards your apprenticeship considering you like just left school and you're just like kind of straight in, you know, getting hands on with everything? How do you manage that? Um, so initially I thought it would mean a lot of studying outside of like work hours and a lot of hard work and effort. Not that it's easy, but mm -hmm. it's like on the job training. So you're doing your work role and also like doing modules for your qualification at work and Cancer Research UK is really good for that because they've supported me throughout that and given me the time for it. So. Uh, and Adam, uh, are there any opportunities to get involved in activities outside of work like social meets, fundraising, etc? Yeah, completely. So we um, have loads of opportunities as staff to get involved in sort of volunteering at events or collecting um, uh, money outside of um, train stations. Uh, and then on top of that, slightly more exciting things like every year we do uh, an amateur boxing event that oh, members of staff can get involved in. And that's we, fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I haven't done it myself. Uh, and we have a Strictly Come Dancing night uh, oh, where, where well. people like pair up and perform. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, on, on the other side of it, within technology, loads of people uh, attend meets where both uh, within technology and within the, uh, uh, the charity sector. Right, thank you for that, Adam. And um, I just wanted to kind of open this question out to all of you guys, basically. Um, for the school leavers, there's usually this huge amount of pressure saying that university is the only option. And so could you maybe shed some light about all the other options that are out there, such as your apprenticeships or your internships? Yeah, sure. I think part of the reason for the, the scenic route that my career has taken is because I dive straight in to a degree without knowing where I was going. So I think it's definitely a good option to explore um, before, before you decide what to commit three years to. Um, an internship is great for that because you get so much experience to different areas, um, even outside of technology um, or like different parts of technology. The internships at CIUK are now paid, which is excellent. Um, so you even yes. get a salary while you're, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great way to kind of explore what you want to do, what you like, what you don't like. Um, and I think one of the, the main things that I got from my university in the end is um, sort of like how do you organize your time how do you write what is life like not at school and that those sort of skills you can definitely get outside of university yeah, that's a really big transition from you know school to university because you know you're kind of by yourself and everything's just it's on you you have yeah. no one else being by yourself it's a big big pressure so. yeah you definitely have to learn to self-motivate and to manage your own time and to manage your own direction which I think you can get in sort of any structured manner doesn't have to be university. Yeah, and just building on that Kristen, what skills have you learned uh, as part of your internship? Um, I've really encountered a lot of different ways of working so I think you know the sitting down with a book and learning from it or just looking up things on the internet or like various ways I might have worked previously. Um, here it's a lot more interactive, there's a lot of stand-up meetings where people just you know briefly give updates of what they're doing or there's a lot of like plotting your work on post-it note charts or just sort of really different ways of working that I hadn't even considered as a way of getting things done or to thinking about um, careers or life or your own work. 
Um, what would you say would be your one big tip for applicants hoping to get a career with um, CR UK? Um, I would say be yourself um, because if you apply as somebody else you're not going to enjoy it as much and Cancer Research UK isn't getting what they um, signed up to and I know you asked for one but as a second one go for it, go for it. <laughs> Many possible. Um, I think want the job uh, we've talked a lot all of us I think about why like has working for Cancer Research UK or a charity is very re rewarding. Mm. If you're not interested in that and you don't want that, you're not going to be as committed to it or you're not going to enjoy it as much. So I think want the job and be yourself. Does anyone great. else got any more tips? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, you don't have to be, not, not all of us are kind of do-gooders. We're not, we're not, <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say. Oh, no. What I mean is, we're not we're not completely motivated by uh, altruism, by our love for our fellow humans. Yeah. You know, it is a job, and it's a really interesting job. It's a really rewarding job because of what 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 we do allows us to fund in terms of research. Um, but you don't you don't kind of have to be motivated by you know spending all your time volunteering. It's not it's not a charity job in that sense. But also to what Kristen said. Um, if if working at a charity, working for a research organisation might not be the thing for you, then it might not be the thing for you. It's not. It's not a place for everyone. There's nothing wrong with taking your your skills and going and working for a bank if that's what if that's what you want to do. If that's what nothing against being a banker. You know. That's that's <laughs> great. And um, yeah, definitely be yourself and want want to to have that job. Uh, thank you for that, Anthony and Maisha. Do you have anything to add on to that? Um, to repeat what Kristen said, like just be yourself. Um, you don't need to know everything about tech or know everything in general. Just have a personality and enjoy the interviews. And Adam? Yeah, so I would say sort of find out about the organisation. I think if, if you do that and you're interested in it, that will come across uh, if you're being interviewed. Um, and it's an organisation where it's not just about doing your, your job and people are interested in what's going on in, in the wider organisation. And Adam, can you tell us about the graduate programme placements and what roles are available there and where could you maybe go afterwards? Yeah, so we've got like a lot of freedom to essentially choose the roles we do from across the whole uh, technology department. So as I mentioned, I've uh, done a role in digital production. I'm going to be working in business intelligence. People have, uh, have previously worked in user experience, product, uh, business analysis, so there's really kind of as many roles as you could possibly want in terms of you get to choose where you go. Uh, and then uh, in the same way, when you leave the graduate scheme and are looking for roles after that, you've got a similar choice across the whole of the technology department and people can go into to whatever area interests them and, and they find they maybe have a talent or an interest for whilst they're on the scheme. Okay, great. Oh, interesting. Um, sounds like a very interesting place to work at. Um, but Kristen, would you say that um, all the internships are based in London or are they kind of spread out across the country? Um, most of the internships are in London, um, but one of the interns in my rotation is based in Oxford. So there are options in Oxford as well. Uh, I don't believe there are options anywhere else. So just mostly London and Oxford as a possibility. Yeah. I want to bow over here. But I know a lot of the interns in my round have only just moved to London for this internship, so certainly there's a big draw there, I guess. Um, there's people from Manchester and Chichester and um, Sheffield and uh, Glasgow that have just come down for this London They're internship. Just attracting everyone yeah. <laughs> into the city for that London life. And Adam, what do you think is the most challenging part of your world? <laughs> Tough one. Yeah. I think what I would probably say is, is as I mentioned, you do a role for six months and you move on and I think it can be quite challenging to essentially start a completely new job every six months yeah. um, but then the, the flip side of it is it offers you a really excellent opportunity to get a lot of experience in quite a, an eclectic uh, yeah. set of opportunities. <laughs> and finally could all of you describe what it's like working at Cancer Research UK in one word? Friendly? <laughs> uh, innovative varied satisfying thank you guys uh, it's been fun finding out what it's like to work here at cancer research uk and some of the different career paths on offer here 
I agree, and it's a very genuine cause as well. I hope all of you feel inspired to maybe take up a career with Cancer Research UK and make a difference yourselves. Don't forget to join the Cancer Research UK talent pool on SpringPod. You can interact with CR UK ambassadors like Anthony, Maisha, Kristen and Adam and discover suitable pathways and even be scouted for a potential role. And don't forget to get all the updates on CR UK social medias and SpringPod. Once again, thank you CR UK for hosting us. It's been really great. See you next time on SpringPod Live for another exciting broadcast.